I'm coming in hot. Hi guys, welcome to Rise Ministry. And I hope this message is a blessing for you. So what do you do while you're waiting? Sometimes we find ourselves waiting for our prayers to be answered. Sometimes we're waiting for a promise from God to be answered. Sometimes we're waiting for our dreams, our goals to, to be accomplished, and we find ourselves in the waiting. And sometimes when we wait, we start tapping our foot. We start growing a little bit impatient and we get a little fidgety. And we start asking ourselves, how long do I have to wait? How much more do I have to wait? I already waited so long, why should I have to wait so long? It's not fair. Why do I have to wait so long? And we begin to start questioning ourselves. So what now? And this is where your turning point is. Your actions, your words that you decide to take will determine how you're gonna pass your waiting. It's gonna determine how long it's gonna take for you to wait. Sometimes when we watch the clock for one minute, it, sound, it feels like forever, but when you're busy doing other stuff, it passes by so fast. And patience is key, and I know it sounds way easier said than done, trust me. In Numbers chapter 11 through 14, we see the people of God, the Israelites, in their journey to the promised land. In the prior book, in the book of Exodus, we see that God took out the Israelites with a mighty hand from slavery. He opened the sea and they crossed over dry lands and they were able to walk over and escape from, from Egypt. And while they're in their journey in Numbers to the promised land, we find that they complained. So when you find yourself in the waiting, do not complain. But I want to dig a little bit deeper as to why the people of God complain. What was going on deep inside of their hearts? What was going on deep inside of their thoughts? What was going on in their inner being? If we go to chapter 13 of Numbers, verse 1 and 2, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Send out men to explore the land of Canaan, the land I am giving to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of the 12 ancestral tribes. God told them to go and explore the land. He said, the land I am giving to the Israelites. He didn't say, let's see if I give it to you or not. He didn't say, maybe I'll give it to you. He didn't say, um, I'll think about it later. No, he said, I am giving you the land. So the 12 spies were sent out. 10 came back with a negative report. Two came back with the positive report. And as the story goes, the Israelites decided to listen to the negative report. But none of this should have mattered to them. The only thing that should have mattered to them was what God said to them. God said, I am giving you the land. He didn't say maybe. He said, I am giving you the land. But the Israelites decided to listen to all these other voices. They decided obviously to listen more to the negative report than to the positive, but it shouldn't have mattered to them because God already spoke. I believe that many questions and doubts began surging inside of them and in their thoughts. And as they were waiting for this promise for God to come to being, they were probably asking themselves if God is really going to come through. And sometimes we, in our waiting, we find ourselves asking God, is he really going to heal me? Is he really going to liberate me from this situation? Is he really going to liberate me from my addiction? Is he really going to restore my relationship with my spouse? Is he really going to uh, restore my relationship with my children? Is he really going to help me out of the situation I am? Is he going to solve my problems? Is he going to provide all of my needs? Is he even going to come through? There was initial trust dwelling deep within the hearts of the people of God. They didn't trust that God would do what he already had said he was going to do. But let's look at Numbers 23, verse 19. It says, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Some of us have been in quarantine for a couple of months now, and we're stuck in the waiting. And my question to you is, do you find yourself complaining or do you find yourself thanking God that you are safe and in good health? Maybe you're waiting for a job opportunity. Maybe you're waiting for a prayer to be answered. Maybe you're waiting for an application to a school to be answered. Maybe you're waiting for God to guide you to the right decision. Maybe you're waiting for a promise from God to come into being in your life. Let's look at some of the characters in the Bible. Abraham waited 25 years for God's promise of a son to come into being. 
Noah waited through the flood. He waited 40 days through the rain and then 150 days for the flood waters to recede. Jesus waited about 30 years to start his ministry. And maybe you're at a point in your waiting where you're like, hurry up, God. But let me tell you that God is never late. God will never show up late. He is eternally perfect and he will always be on time. God hears you and he sees you. It's worth waiting for God and it's worth waiting for what God has for you. Don't settle for less. Don't settle for what may come along your way or what may be offered while you're in the waiting. If God has you in the waiting, wait patiently for God. Let's look at what Proverbs 3, 5 says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. God is asking you today, do you trust me? Join me in this prayer. Father God, help us join the waiting.